was very much disturbing. Even yesterday, I didn't even. A mutilated body belonging to a young woman was discovered by community members on the 8th of January 2024 in this abandoned house. It was later discovered that the body belonged to 18-year-old Mujaji Toka who had gone missing three days before. She had recently turned 18 years of age and her celebration of adulthood was cut short by this brutal and gruesome murder. But who could have done it? So I have covered over a hundred homicide cases on my channel, but this one really affected me and you're about to find out why. So we start here in Tokoyando, I hope that I pronounced that correctly, in a village called Makomeni in Botlokwa Limpopo, which is a province in South Africa. It is pretty close to Zimbabwe and is approximately 320 kilometers away from Joburg, which takes you about four hours to drive. Mojaji Toka lived in this village and attended school here. She was a grade 11 student, which is lower six in the Zimbabwean education system. Everything in her life was going well until the 5th of January 2024, when she left home to go and buy airtime at the tax shop and did not return. It took the family a few hours to realize that she was missing and they decided to go to the tax shop to check on her but they could not find her. Apparently she had not arrived at the tax shop. They then alerted the neighbors and they created a search party and looked for her everywhere but she was nowhere to be seen. They then retreated to their home hoping that maybe she had eloped because it is a natural thing for late teens to move in with their boyfriends and run away from home. And at the next day they continued their search but she still was nowhere to be found. They were then encouraged to make a missing persons report at the police station. On the third day of the search, while they were looking, hoping that maybe they missed something, her younger sibling spotted shoes that looked identical to Mojaji's that were besides the road. These shoes were right across the road from an abandoned house that they had not looked into. The community members circled the yard and entered the house. They were not ready for the gory sight they were about to encounter. In the house was the mutilated body of a young woman. Her head, her breast, her private part, her legs had been removed from her body so it was difficult to say if it was really Mojaji or not. Very few people managed to even enter the house to see the crime scene because of how horrific it was. The community members had no option but to link this to a ritual murder. Her family members were called to identify her body and they only managed to identify her by her toes and a jacket that she was wearing on the day that she went missing. So preliminary observation before a DNA test proved that this was indeed Mojaji Toka's mutilated body. Her family, her village, and even the entire province was shocked by this horrific murder because Nebopo province is the safest province in South Africa with a homicide rate of 3.3% by 100,000. So who could have killed her and for what reason? The police now had to solve this disturbing case to pacify an enraged and traumatized community. Majority of the time when a person is murdered, they are murdered by someone who is well known to them. So they had to start with acquaintances who was the last person to see her alive. Upon further inquiry, they discovered that she had a boyfriend, a 19-year-old Brian Murwira, a Zimbabwean illegal migrant living in the village. They also found out that he was the last person to be seen with her alive on the 5th of January 2024. Eight days after her body was discovered in that abandoned house, they arrested Brian Murwira at his rented house in the same village. When they searched his house, they found some of her missing parts in his possession. He had just been caught red-handed and had no option but to confess to the murder of Mojaji Toka. Meanwhile, the grieving community inquired from the village Sangoma to help them locate her other missing parts. Claiming to use supernatural powers, the Sangoma led them to her missing head where it was buried. This led to suspicions that he was involved. How did he know where her head was? It all made sense when he was implicated by Brian Murwira in his confession. The Sangoma Thomas name was Tatenda Stole, a 36-year-old Zimbabwean also living in the same village. The most disturbing part is both these two men are Zimbabwean and had committed such a gruesome crime in a foreign land. They were both denied bail and remanded in custody. Brian's case was a bit easy because he pled guilty, but Tatenda's case was a bit complicated because he denied any involvement. Brian took a plea deal and the judge, considering his age and his admission of guilt, sentenced him to 22 years in prison, which is a slap 
slap on the wrist, if you ask me. Tatenda is still in remand prison and is awaiting trial in June 2025. Unfortunately, as of now, the motive is not explicitly stated and we can only know when his trial papers are uploaded. Whether or not this homicide is a result of a romantic conflict or premeditated ritual murder, it does not take away from the cruelty of dismembering a human body. It can never make sense that you kill someone, dismember them and keep some of their body parts. It is unspeakable, it is unheard of. And I believe that 22 years is too little for what this boy did. I believe that he wanted to sell her body parts for money rituals. We still have a long way to go in Africa, scrubbing the superstition from our people's minds that you only make money by working hard. May her soul continue to rest in eternal peace.